A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 113th episode of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. Back in April 2020, when this pandemic had just come into India and schools had shut down, we at Notebook felt that it was our duty to put together a series of webinars that would help our esteemed educators connect with each other and discuss the various problems that they were facing. Online education was quickly becoming the new normal and we thought this platform would help teachers understand the space better and tackle the various issues that they were facing. Little did we know that more than a year later, we would have done over a hundred episodes and discussions that have gone far beyond online education. We have discussed curricular topics, the new education policy, co-curricular topics, sports and games, the house system, and even topics like mental health. Today, we look at a very interesting aspect of school education system particularly for the educators, that is getting published. School educators typically see getting published in three different ways. We have seen some teachers who have chosen to write fiction. I myself am a big fan of books written by a lot of teachers. Then there is academic publishing. Teachers obviously reach into the incredible amount of experience that they gather through their classroom teaching and publish textbooks. And then there is of course, the personal development aspect of academic publishing. Teachers looking to get higher degrees or a doctorate often need to get published in peer reviewed journals. So that comprises the third aspect. But all of this in parallel to school education, to taking classes, lesson planning, managing so many students is not easy. Today, we will look at the various aspects of this particular point getting published. Our first speaker today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Dune School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Dune School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. And we at Notebook are proud to have him as a senior advisor. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Over to you. Thank you very much, Bayu, um, for that introduction. And very good evening to Achin, uh, Abhishek, and everyone at the Notebook office in Dehradun. Um, a wonderful topic. Um, you know, when you look at the, 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 the three R's of education, well, reading and writing would make up the first two R's. And, um, you know, and what does a teacher do best? I mean, apart from reading and writing, I mean, that's what most teachers do, do well. And what great fun and, you know, um, uh, the feeling in a student, if, if, if his English teacher or his geography teacher was a published writer, you know, of some fame and repute, uh, it would, you know, it would be such an... Uh, such a such a great thing for the school, even on the st students. Um, teachers are a breed of professionals who are exposed to so many funny, sad, interesting, and human stories. By the very fact that they are in touch with so many students, old students, parents, so there's ample material for them to pen down stories and and write books. Um, many erstwhile school teachers um, became very famous writers. Uh, William Golding, for one was a schoolmaster who wrote The Lord of the Flies, which was a textbook in school. And um, when I taught this book, I, I always told the kids, I said, there are only two things William Golding knew. First of all, he was in the British Navy. And so he knew about something about uh, being lost on an island. And the second was he knew about children. And uh, of course, there was Kurt um, Vonnegut, there was J.K. Rowling, Robert Frost was a teacher, George Orwell, Dan Brown, Stephen King, Believe it or not, Philip Pullman. They were all teachers who became writers. Um, it doesn't surprise me that teachers, be, you know, would take to writing later on. Um, it has been a dream of mine, I guess, and many others, um, even though they may not admit it, uh, to get published, to have that name of yours on the spine of a book, and to see that book, you know, on the on the bookshelves of, of bookstores. Um, as teachers, as Bayou mentioned, uh, there are 
that are travel books that they write because they, they have access to travel in the holidays, they have a long holiday break, or they write textbooks, or they write novels. Um, these are the three types of books. Now, I have written three books in my life, but they're very, very uh, insignificant books. The first one was a geography textbook that I did most of the graphics diagrams and maps for. And I was a young teacher in my early 20s, and I was off to the UK in 79 on my first trip. And I gratefully accepted the lump sum that I was paid, and I just put it in the back pocket and I ran off. Um, I had no experience with publishers and you know whether I was being diddled or not. Uh, the second book was, was a book of a thousand multiple choice questions covering the entire geographical course. Um, it was part of a series of books called Thousand Questions. Um, I spent an entire summer holiday doing it, uh, which became very popular with students doing the IAS exams because it could cover the entire course through a lot of diagrams and multiple choice questions. And then I did, also did a book for Pearson. Uh, I co-authored a book for Pearson for class nine and 10. So I did see my name very briefly on, on the back of books, but that was all. Um, I never made much money on it. So uh, I've always dreamt of writing about my travels. Um, and I've traveled over the length and breadth of the country on motorcycles and back of trucks and trains. Um, but I'm waiting for that, maybe that inspiration or motivation that um, has never come so far. Uh, so one day I think um, I, I shall sit down and, and write before I, get dementia and lose my memory and uh, and all my all the stored matter gets lost it is hard work to write and to get published um, and the, the most important thing of course is that um, uh, you need to have um, uh, discipline it's very very it's it's a disciplined activity um, i i once started writing a book um, uh, of fiction based on my many years as a teacher uh, I, I set this in a fictitious school, which of course uh, res resembled the schools I worked with. And uh, they were idiosyncratic schoolmasters who were my, my, my characters there. And uh, I was very um, uh, greatly inspired by a, by a book written by John Lacar called The Perfect Murder. And it was set in a typical British public school. So I started writing a series of short stories, but then I think I, 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 I lost interest and it still lies undone. Um, I think in India, a lot of teachers are trapped by the wiles of the publishers and are not given their fair share of, you know, the financial sharing in the business. And they do need help, if not in a, you know, advice of how to get the best publishers. It's much easier to be a published writer uh, abroad. Um, I, I, uh, I recall a book called Teacher Man uh, by Frank um, McCourt. Uh, Frank McCourt was an Irishman who lived in New York and taught in a very, you know, very tough um, CD, uh, you know, school in a CD part of uh, the Bronx. And he just lived in a small one room apartment and he waited for this one book uh, and he made his millions on Teacher Man. And then he went on to win the Pulitzer Prize when he wrote the famous book, Angela's Ashes. So here was a, here was a schoolmaster who spent his time, you know, teaching in a very rough um, um, school. And then he became world famous with just one or two books that he wrote. So I gain a lot of inspiration and I hope a lot of my colleagues get inspired by that. Um, a lot of my friends who've been teachers have been published. My ex headmaster was a prolific writer uh, on his CV. There were pages and pages of papers that he, that he published. Uh, he also had, I think five books on international policy and political issues, um, foreign policy international relations. Um, another young man who was a colleague of mine who taught at Doom, he taught the IB course on the theory of knowledge. Uh, he put together um, two books. One was a book called Recess, which was a collection of important and, 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 uh, and very, very, uh, very good speeches uh, made at um, various convocations and speech days. Uh, there was one by Vikram Seth that uh, got my eye that, that, uh, in that book. But his second book uh, was rather unnerving, and it's, it's a, it was a fiction. Um, it's called Eunuch Park. Um, <laughs> not a very uh, easy book to read, but he, he was published author while he was teaching at the Doom School. Um, <clears throat> teachers have a lot of time and resources. They have their two month vacation. They also have access to libraries. Uh, and nowadays libraries are very well equipped, even online libraries. 
And uh, I think teachers should look at writing as a part of their career. Um, and yet, as I said, it's, you need discipline, you need time management, you need the ability to research. Um, another of my headmasters, a Calcutta-based gentleman who wrote for Oxford publications, he wrote a lot, series of very, very uh, successful English grammar books and workbooks. He would spend his entire summer locked into the Taj Hotel in, a, in an air-conditioned suite, and he just, and he just punched away uh, at uh, his books. He was either writing new ones or upgrading and revising the old ones. And uh, I wouldn't say this was an interesting way of spending a, a summer holiday, but very lucrative nonetheless. Um, teachers um, have the options of, okay. So I said, also, um, it's very easy these days to buy books for, you know, for, on Amazon. And uh, it, it's not like in the old days where you have to have a bookshop. Today, teachers have access to so many materials. It's also good for teachers to write because writing is one way in which a teacher can connect with students outside the classroom. You know, I always say that whether if a teacher is good at sport or dramatics or debating or photography, he just makes that extra connect with students, which is so important for the profession. And these days, of course, with laptops and software for formatting and writing, spell checks, punctuation, writing is so much more easier in the, than in the old days. Um, uh, there are also teachers who would you know, be able to uh, proofread and, and correct your, your work, which, um, uh, which would not be easily available in, in other professions. Um, also, you know, um, but a lot of teachers in this country, you know, teaching is not looked at as, as a lucrative profession. And so it's very sad that when, when teachers have to take tuitions um, to make two ends meet, a way of you know, augmenting their income, their paltry income, I'd say, is to start writing, to, to explore the, the, the whole idea of being a published writer. Um, so um, also teachers, I think, need to be given a sabbatical. Their 24-7 job, uh, they need to be given sabbaticals, they need to be given money to travel, to read, to study, to refresh their minds. Teaching is a profession where the kids draw a lot from you. And I think teachers need to you know, replenish their, their spirit, their soul, the need to recharge their batteries, get new ideas. Uh, so I think sabbaticals are very important. Um, also, in, at the school I last worked in, the Doon School, publishing was a very important tradition in school. We had 11 publications, some annual, some biannual, some monthlies, and of course, one was the weekly. Um, they had a separate room where the editors of all these 11 publications would sit at different times and, and, and there were computers, there were printers, there were huge amounts of software, shelves, um, for, there were cameras. And this tradition in school um, it gave rise to writers like Abhitab Ghosh, Vikram Seth, George Verghees, you know, people like you know, Arun Puri from um, India Today, NDTV's Pranoy Roy, these were people who came from school and who had been editors of these, you know, these various magazines. So once a school has a tradition of writing where students and teachers get published, it just sets the ball rolling. Um, boys in school are published. Um, we, I've had students who have published books of poems. I've had a student who wrote an, an, a, a sort of a, an animation or a cartoon on, on uh, Indian history. And another boy who wrote a very good um, um, illustrated books on dinosaurs. He was quite an authority on dinosaurs. Um, each special assembly at school, um, you know, we had so many special assemblies. Um, and apart from the many, you know, items on the evening's agenda, apart from saying goodbye to teachers who were leaving, the prize distribution, the chief guests by speakers, by, by their chief guests, um, they, we always look forward to that book release time in the, in the, uh, in the evening's events, where um, either a coffee table book or, or on, on, on the photographs of school, or there was another book that was released, uh, Adventures, all the treks and various mountaineering treks that we had gone on as a school. Um, sometimes we released books of birds of our 70-acre campus. Uh, one teacher even released a book on um, all the trees because our school was once upon a time the first forest research institute. Um, 
till it moved into its new campus about 10 kilometers down the road. But we always were exposed to some book release when the chief guest pulled the ribbon, then you know, undid the knot and held up the book. I think these were times when our boys and teachers were inspired to be published writers because we saw somebody else getting published. So I think it's an important um, thing to look at for teachers and boys to get published, to, to augment their incomes, just to put their ideas on paper. Um, if ever I come out with a book, the idea is not to make money. The idea is to put my thoughts so that many of my students and even my own children would read it because it takes a lifetime of experiences. And I wouldn't like to go down to the grave with all those experiences in my mind. I would like to share them with everyone. So with that, Shubayu, I hope I have um, done justice to this wonderful topic. I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for setting the ball rolling on that. Uh, just a couple of points, sir. Having heard you teach geography, I'm sure you did more than just graphics for a geography book. And also, if ever you want to see those short stories in a non-printed form, we at Notebook would love to make videos out of them. So do send them over and we can make them into short videos that uh, can stay on the internet for posterity. Thank, Thank you so you much, much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go on to the stellar panel that we have lined up for you today, I'll take just a couple of your minutes to tell you a little bit about Notebook. We at Notebook are an edtech organization. We make small videos like I just told Bharatshar about, but these pertain to the school curriculum. Every topic from every subject is made into a series of videos that can be consumed on any device that you have access to, which means that you as a teacher can use these videos while you're taking your class. Whether your classes are online or offline, you could use these videos. These videos are about six to 10 minutes in duration, and you can use them as a visual introduction to the topic that you're about to teach. Months later, when the students have to revise the topic, they have access to the same videos on their personal devices, whatever they have at home. It could be their father's smartphone or the laptop they have from their brother. They could use that device to access the same videos. And this serves two purposes. One, they get a more visual understanding of whatever you're teaching. And the second, they get reminded of what you said in class that day when this video was played. The video essentially serves as a memory aid. What I'm going to do now is play you a short clip from one of the notebook videos so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is Reena Banerjee and she is from the city of Lucknow. It's a chilly winter morning and she drives through central Lucknow, crossing the wide boulevards, epic monuments and several parks. Who is Reena Banerjee and where is she going? Reena Banerjee runs an organization called the Empowered Women's Association, EWA. Eva works with artisans of chicken curry, a traditional form of Lucknow embroidery, and was primarily set up to educate and empower the women artisans through revival of the once declining art of chicken curry. The main objective of Eva is to service and not the profit. Dear students, as Eva is a not-for-profit organization and our today's lesson is on the chapter Accounting for Not-for-Profit Organization. Rina Manaji is inside her workshop now and overviewing the work of different groups. This is a 12-year-old niece and her name is Kavya. She has come for a vacation to Lucknow and dear Bua is explaining her what exactly is happening here. This not-for-profit organization had been primarily formed to provide service to a specific group, that is, the chicken curry artisans. Generally, they aim to provide service to public at large, such as education, healthcare, recreation, sports, and so on, without discriminating caste, creed, and color. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a short clip from one of the notebook videos. This is the class 12 commerce chapter accounting for not-for-profit organization. If you head on to our website, www.notebook.school, you would find more than 10,000 such videos at your disposal. As you just saw, we use the power of storytelling to engage students with the topic. If you see the second half of this video, you would realize that after this story, where we have introduced the idea of not-for-profit organizations, the students would be told 
about more accounting basics. But by that time, they're already engaged with digital topic. Besides such content, Notebook also partnered with IIM Calcutta Innovation Park to bring a very unique event for school children, the Ignite. You know, for the last few weeks, I have been telling you about this event. Uh, we have spoken to a lot of you one on one to invite your schools for this event. This is an international inter school online innovation and entrepreneurship challenge. We are asking students to don the hats of startups and entrepreneurs, look around themselves, pick up whatever problem that they want to solve, and come up with their own innovative solutions. These students would be given mentorship from faculty at IIM Calcutta, who would then go on to present their business cases in front of our jurors. We are essentially looking to untap this huge repository of innovation that lie within our children. I'm very happy to report that we have had several schools register. We initially planned to have 64 schools. Uh, we have already surpassed that number. Now, if more schools are registering, we will have to do that in groups of four. Otherwise, the format goes for a toss. In case you are from a school that still has not registered and you want to register, this link will help you. It is http colon slash slash bit.ly. That's bit.ly slash notebook ignite. N-O-T-E-B-O-O-K, notebook ignite, I-G-N-I-T-E. Well, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the work at hand. We are today discussing the topic of getting published. And to discuss this topic further, we have this absolutely fantastic panel that we have for you today. We have with us Dr. Sandeep Khanna, who's the gentleman to your left. Dr. Khanna is the principal at MIT Vishwashanti Guru School School at Pune. He holds a master's degree in science and education with specialization in botany and career guidance. He has had more than 29 years of experience in school education. He was associated with the famous Wellham Boys School in Dehradun and prestigious Doon School in Dehradun for almost 21 years as senior science faculty, head of department, senior housemaster, and careers in charge before shifting to Pune in 2013. He was founder principal of Kothari School Pune for more than five years before taking over as principal of MIT Vishwashanti Guru School School in 2018, where he has been the principal for the last three years. He is the author of science and biology books and wrote articles on career tips and tips to grade 10 or 12, 12th grade students in various newspapers. He worked as examiner for many years and as a member of the curriculum review committee. He has been writing regularly during the pandemic period in different magazines and newspapers as well. He has participated in numerous seminars and workshops at national and international level and presented a paper at the 11th International Conference at IIT Delhi on the topic technology in education. He took part in a panel discussion on preparing students after school at the World Education Summit in Mumbai in 2019. He has been a speaker at various seminars and organized workshops for teachers on different topics, including multiple intelligence, professional work ethics, and career guidance. He's won numerous awards, including the winner of the National Bolt Award, which is a Broad Outlook Learner Teacher Award 2007, and was awarded by the Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, Sri B. L. Joshi, in 2008. He won the Best District Principal Award in July 2016-17 and 1920 from the National Science Olympiad Foundation. He also won the Innovative Leadership Award 2016 and 17 by SIP Abacus, ECA, Early Childhood Association India, Pune, for Exemplary Contribution in Education 2016-17, Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan Award at Pune in September 2017, and Avantika Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award 2017 at Birla Center, Pune. He also won the Pune Shikshak Gaurav Purashkar in 2019 by Azam Campus and Principal Par Excellence Award between 2018 to 2020 by IIH in Pune. Also, he received a Certificate of Honor from Honorable Minister of Forest Sri Prakash Javadekar for Anandvan Project in 2015 and Terra Green Olympiads in 2017 and 2018, respectively. He set up the career guidance cell and organized career workshops at various levels, including five career fairs in Dehradun between 2004 to 2012, where many renowned universities and institutes participated from all over the country and abroad. Sir, thank you so much for being here today. It's an absolute honor to have you on the platform. We also have with us Mrs. Yashika Bhardwaj. Having completed her schooling from War Minister England 
Mrs. Yashika Bhardwaj completed her honors and masters in English from the Punjab University. She secured the gold medal and a bachelor's as well as a master's degrees in education. She has been in the field of education since 1985. A keen writer, she has authored several books in the educational field and has written several articles for journals such as Swagat and the Kevalier. An excellent orator, she has been an active member of debating societies in India and England and has compared events at the national level, such as the Army Day Parade held in New Delhi. She has held esteemed positions of the President of the Government College for Girls, Chandigarh, Sports in Charge of the Hostel of GCG, and the President of the Youth Club of Raksha Bhavan, New Delhi. She has been a keen sports person herself, having represented her school in athletics and basketball, and a college in lawn tennis and swimming. She has also been the winner of the Noida Squash Open for Women. She has been actively involved in community service, having conducted adult literacy drives for women, computer literacy campaigns, and financial empowerment for women. She has been appreciated by the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, that is SARC, for her efforts in environment education. An avid traveler, she has traveled vastly, not only in India, but across the world. She has been a passionate and dynamic teacher who is committed to the student's success, targeting so that each and every student maximizes his or her potential. Her teaching learning methodology has enabled her students to attain a high level of achievement in a subject. She has been appointed by the CBSC as an observer for in inspections and examinations, as a mentor for implementation of academic strategies, and has been a CBSC counselor for over 10 years. An essential team player, an innovative thinker with a high level of self-motivation, she has been the principal of CBSC schools for the past 19 years. She's currently heading the KR Mangalam World School in Vaishali. In this capacity, she has handled all aspects of school operations and administration, finance, teachers' mentoring and development and curriculum development. She has been at the forefront of conducting training programs for teachers across the nation. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here today. I shall thank stop my you. share now. Thank you, ma'am. It's an absolute privilege having you. Dr. Khanna, if you could also please uh, switch on your camera and unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you and see you. Thank you so much for being here. Dr. Khanna, if I may come to you first. Sir, how important is it for teachers to get published? Uh, first of all, I'll begin uh, uh, with the welcome note. Uh, you know, it's an honor once again to be uh, sharing the screen with uh, my senior most colleague, I must say, Philip. Uh, uh, sir has been a mentor to me. What else I should say? Uh, sir, I can't see you. I, I just heard you before this. So, uh, uh, namaste, very good evening. Uh, it's, an, it's a privilege to uh, be present here today, this afternoon. So, I will uh, begin uh, with my old uh, days. You know, I'm talking about 90s. Uh, this was the year uh, uh, 1993 when I joined a school in Dehradun called Wellems. And I was just new to the school, just uh, uh, started uh, teaching in the month of March. And uh, it was the month of May, the summer break came and uh, my principal uh, one day called me in the office. He said, uh, Mr. Khanna, we are going to, I've taken an assignment uh, to publish certain books, books on science, uh, environment for the middle school. And I'm giving the assignment. This is the task for you for the summer break. I said, oh my God, I'm new to teaching and what kind of task is given to me? So <laughs> believe me, it was uh, not easy. Uh, I, I took those uh, topics home, uh, back home for those two months, and uh, it was science. So those days we never had computers, nothing. I, I had to just, uh, uh, you know, do the drawing of each and every sketch took me about a day. You know, if it was a topic of a bird, so uh, one full day I was just drawing that bird. And uh, as I said, so I had to just uh, do the research from different books and encyclopedias, visiting some libraries. So that's how my... Uh, publishing uh, started, uh, you know, the writing started. However, you have to have the passion and love for writing. And uh, it continued actually. Then what happened, uh, I still remember another five years later, uh, uh, I got an assignment from uh, Institute of Career Studies because I was into the career counseling as well. So I remember uh, there was a, a lady called Dr. Amrita Das. So she said, uh, Mr. Khanna, we want to publish uh, some articles on uh, uh, career tips 
in the Hindustan Times, there is a supplement, and there are uh, uh, you know for two months in the month of January and Feb, we want articles from you. You have to coordinate from Dehradun for every single subject. So I still remember rushing from Valem to Dune, you know, uh, asking Mr. Ajay Banerjee, I still remember his name, for mathematics articles and my physics teachers and the chemistry and biology I'm writing myself. And, you know, uh, and being in a residential school is 24 seven job as it is. So uh, that's how my, uh, uh, you know, the journey with the uh, publishing began. However, when the articles were published in a paper like uh, HT, Lucknow edition, or uh, the book was published by Hemkund Press and it was circulated. And I remember one day, you know, we went for a, a workshop to Dune School for the teacher's uh, training. There is a teacher center at Dune School. And I was so glad to see my book kept in that teacher center. I said, oh my God, uh, uh, you know, this is the recognition I'm getting. I don't know, Philip some, um, must not have noticed ever, but I saw that book and I was so glad. And uh, that's how my journey uh, with the writing started. Wonderful, sir. When we started, I spoke about three uh, cases of teachers getting published. I missed out the fourth aspect where publishing houses often invite teachers to write articles. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, sir. Uh, Yashika, ma'am, if I may come to you next. Uh, ma'am, the same question. How important is it for a teacher to have published work? Well, thank you for asking me that question. And right at the outset, I must say thank you to so by you to you for organizing this, Philip, and Notebook for having me with you and to all the members who are attending for spending their time to be with us here today. Your question was how important it is for a teacher to get published. And right at the outset, I must say, I have a slightly varied opinion on this because according to me, if you're a, you don't need to be an author to be a good teacher. And it works both ways. You don't need to be a good teacher to be an author either. And I will reiterate that because we have a large number of educationists here in the, in, in the attendees and who sometimes feel a little inadequate if they haven't had a work published. But I must say it is not essential. It is not imperative for you to be an author if you want to be a good teacher. At the same time, I must say that teachers are writers in any way. Every single day, a teacher is writing so much. She's writing her lesson plans. She's shooting off emails to the parents. She's communicating with the parents. She's writing notes off to the students. So a teacher is essentially a writer too. And when you have your own work published, it gives you a sense of validity. It gives you a sense of ownership. It gives you a sense of feeling a little more acknowledged, if I may say, even if it be by your own self. God gave you two hands and while you shake hands with one, you can always pat yourselves on the back with the other, even as when Philip mentioned that sometimes the books don't make money or the teachers don't make money. It's important for them to get published, but it's important from the point of view that what kind of value it brings to the teacher. Yes, to an organization, it bring, it's extremely important if they do have people on board who have been published in their particular or respective subjects, because it shows the quality of teachers that they have. At the same time, as was mentioned earlier, when a teacher's work is being taught in a school, imagine how tall the teacher feels when she's standing in front of the students, knowing that this is a chapter that I wrote, and this is the book in which my name is over there. So when a teacher gets published, she has ownership of the same and her own lesson she's incorporating in the teaching of a class. So it makes the teaching of the chapter much easier and more interesting. At the same time, I would encourage teachers to be publishers. Reason being NCRT gives you a broad framework and also very specific expected learning outcomes that are required from every single chapter. And every single teacher is a specialist in her own subject. So when you have those broad guidelines by the NCRT, you can create your own content. The world over, if I were to say that we're going to teach the, let's say a topic like ocean currents, how we teach the topic of ocean currents is the methodology or the pedagogical delivery is going to change, but the content doesn't change. The ocean currents don't change if you're in India or in Germany or in France or in the UK or the US, the topic and the core elements of the topic stay the same. 
So if you have a broader perspective of this matter of teachers publishing, we should encourage teachers to publish. We should encourage them to create a database for themselves. And I'll use your forum to say that it is the publishing houses that must reach out to teachers. There is a dichotomy here because sometimes you do have teachers who are publishing who are not really specialists in the subject, but they have a passion for writing. So they are publishing too. You've got a wide variety of content that the teachers can publish, whether it is a chapter, whether it's a work of fiction, or even if it be lesson plans. As head teachers, as principals of schools, we must encourage our team to be able to pick up a pen and write. And if I may share an example of my own school, I'm heading the KR Mangalam World School in Vaishali, and I'm extremely proud when I say that my team of teachers over a period of three months when this lockdown started, we said, let's add a little quality to our own uh, learning and our teaching and our delivery of our lessons. And this team of teachers in a span of about three months wrote 1,775 lesson plans that we intend to get published too. And these lesson plans include experiential learning, project delivery, the works. And I feel so proud of their work. And that's why I can mention it and speak about it over here because all it required was a little bit of encouragement. And now when you have other teachers approaching this team of teachers, how do I go about teaching this topic? Can you help me out with teaching it? They've got the lesson plans ready and they have been empowered to be able to publish. The CBSC too talks about, and you've got the Diksha platform where you can share all what you have written over there. So I think while I'll, I'll conclude as we move on with the discussion with the panelists that you are a great teacher provided you have the passion for teaching and it is not essential or important for you to be an author or a published uh, writer in order for you to be a good teacher. At the same time, it does add Philip to your credentials. True. Wonderful, ma'am. So you are of the view that while it is not absolutely necessary, it's a great quality to have. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ma'am. Dr. Khanna, let's say you're interviewing two teachers for a certain job. Right? And this is something that you do as the head of an institution. Between the published one and the non-published one, would you hold them significantly different or is the publishing bit just a good to have? I think I'll look for certain qualities, you know, uh, rather than the published work of the teacher whom, uh, who has come to, uh, 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 you know, apply for a role of a teacher. You know, uh, uh, I must say that uh, Good authors are first of all uh, good readers. So I will I will just uh, try to understand that how well was the teacher is uh, about uh, her uh, own subject, correct? So I'll not look for the uh, published work, rather I'll look for the in-depth uh, knowledge of the teacher. And uh, it is good, yes, it is an added advantage if the teacher is also getting uh, some material along with her that is being recognized and published. So uh, I'll go for that. Uh, another thing is, you know, yes, publishing uh, gives a teacher, uh, you know, to keep herself up to date with the current scenario, with the changing trends. Ma'am has already discussed, and I think Philip has uh, left nothing to be discussed. Actually, he's touched upon every single area. So I'm I'm left with uh, hardly any uh, very few options. However, you know, uh, uh, these are the certain qualities I will look for. Uh, in a teacher whom I'm going to appoint uh, uh, the passion to read, passion to write and uh, learn, unlearn and learn all. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Yasika, ma'am, uh, does this pertain to non-academic writing as well? What if a teacher just has a passion for, say, writing fiction? I, I think you should just pick up a pen and write. And uh, as teachers, especially as language teachers, when we are teaching students the importance of poetry, fiction, drama, we also encourage them to do creative writing uh, while they are at it in the languages. And that is all nonfiction when you encourage or motivate them to write. And the very first time that we teach the students to uh, write a poem is when we take rhyming words. And you know, with a single line, you can start off and you can make uh, uh, rhymes out of it and couplets out of it. So teachers need not restrict themselves to academic work. 
like I just shared with you, the teachers are intending, they've got the material ready and intending to publish lesson plans. And lesson plans, how to go about teaching, are nothing to do with the academic content of a particular chapter. And if a teacher has a flair for the language, why not write nonfiction? Why not write fiction? The genres should not be limited or restricted to them. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, that I have written some works. The works have been academic also, but the latest one was a work of nonfiction, which talks about how a cadet lives his life in the Indian Military Academy and how they groom him to become an officer and a gentleman. And as Philip mentioned, you, may, you base it on your own experiences. And I based it on the experiences of my son as narrated to me. So the genre should not be limited and they should be encouraged to write, to express, and to be able to get published. These days getting published is a lot more hassle-free than it used to be. And the usual rejections that we would face when we would write our articles and proofread them, et cetera, all those thanks to technology have been reduced. And now self-publishing houses have come up. So where when you invest an X amount of money in publishing your book, by the time it sells just about two to 300 copies, which your own family circle can, your money has been recovered. So there's a, it's a win-win situation in every way. And plus it gives that stamp of having been a published author on your name. Thank you so much, ma'am. That really helps. Uh, Dr. Khanna, if I may come to you next. We have about close to 100 people watching this and a lot of teachers are looking to get published. What is the advice that you want to give to them? Okay, I think uh, as we discussed in the beginning also, you have to have a, a, you know, a, a passion and love for your own uh, subject. Suppose I am a science person. Uh, I also uh, am very keen for career guidance. So I have to have a, a passion for my own subject, first of all. Second thing, I should be a good reader. I should read to a lot of research, be updated with the changing trends. Uh, as an academician, I need to be updated with the pedagogical uh, theories, changing trends. I need to be in touch with a lot of publishers. Yes, I need to be uh, maybe uh, friends with some authors or some uh, renowned authors. I still remember because it gives us a lot of motivation. You know, I was in Dune and, you know, I remember that uh, Mr. Ruskin born district from Missouri and, uh, you know, uh, the students were queued up uh, taking his autographs. But yes, after that, there was a very, uh, you know, uh, a good interaction with them and we learned so much from him. Similarly, when we were in Dune, then uh, I remember one morning, Mr. Chetan Bhagat had come for the morning assembly and, you know, so uh, it gives a lot of motivation even to the teachers when they see these people getting recognized and they have, some of them have been the old students of our schools. Uh, another thing, uh, they have to be perfect, perfect in the sense if there is a timeline given, is, the, is there is a deadline given. For example, I was, uh, you know, uh, 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 master in charge of science magazines. Uh, I remember in both the schools. I was in Dune, then I was taking care of Echo for a uh, short period of span of time. And when I was at Williams, I was taking care of Wavelength magazine. So we had, uh, you know, that timeline. So we had, we had to abide by those timelines and under us, there were a group of students. So uh, those, you know, along with the authorship, a lot of leadership skills were also being developed. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, teacher needs to do some market research also. What is the topic? What is the uh, changing trend? I need to pick up and I need to start writing and working on that. So uh, new ideas, you know, uh, taking a uh, new technology, you know, nowadays everybody is uh, computer savvy, technology is changing the entire scenario of uh, uh, publishing houses, let it be the newspaper, magazines, journals, we have so many things like we have the Wikipedia, we have uh, ebooks, we have digital books, uh, Kindles, so we have to be updated with the changing trends also our teachers as well. So these are some of the guidelines or advice I'll give to my teachers, the budding teachers that Keep yourself updated. Staying updated. So that's that's one major advice yes. there. Uh, Yashika, ma'am, if I may come to you. I, I would, uh, uh, Subhai, you tell the teachers just write from the heart. And when you're writing from the heart, everything falls in place. 
and write such that you understand that no topic is taboo at all. And uh, if you are sticking to academic publishing, then get your facts right. And I do know of an organization where they had, uh, I will not name the organization, but I will uh, name what I'm saying right now because it's, it's sub judice, so I cannot really comment on it, where one of the statements made in one of the GK books was that Valmiki was a robber before he became a sage. And the Valmiki community has taken this organization to court and uh, the matter is uh, still being, being heard. So when you write as a teacher, you must validate. There's another publication where I saw where under the prime minister's uh, name, the photograph was a mismatch. So you can't really attribute these to printing errors and or maybe it was a mistake made when a book went to print. No, because you need to be connected with your book with your writing from the moment you pick up a pen to the time that it is being read by somebody. You need to be involved with it. I must also say here that we must encourage future authors and encourage future authors, not just amongst our teachers, but also amongst our students. And uh, the students these days, especially in this past one year, have picked up the pen, have penned down their thoughts, uh, there, there have been a lot of situations at home which have been related to stress and loss and moments where of joy and happiness where recovery also has taken place. And these students have had access to free online tools as well, which can convert topics into comic strips. Uh, the teachers are using it in their online classes, the students are using it in their project work and off the cuff of my, um, uh, or just off my mind, I can remember uh, Tundu and Ed Puzzle are such where you could have got ready-made animations available. Minecraft is there where you can use and create a comic strip. So encourage the students to be able to write. And when you encourage the students and teachers to write, ask them to be prepared for rejection. A book like The Chicken Soup for the, School, for the Soul, which has gone into multiple topics and publications, was rejected over 144 times before it was published. So when you want to write, write correctly, write politically and historically correctly, write from the heart, write for whatever it is you wish to write about, and let the moving finger write and speak for you. Wonderful, ma'am. Uh, I am personally of the opinion that if every single piece of literature out there was converted into comic strips, that would be a fantastic move. So this re-emergence of comic books as a form of communication or form of publishing is something that I follow very keenly. Uh, uh, so Bayou, if I may uh, say one of my most prized possessions in my library is the first editions of the Amarchitra Katha and I picked those up when I was about six or seven years old. And that time the Amarchitra Katha used to cost one rupee 50 pesa and I bound them up in volumes of eight. And it is those comic strips, the Amarchitra Katha that goaded me to pursue history when I was in the UK and to do uh, history even in my college. So comic strips are a great motivator, really are. Wonderful. In case you saw the small clip of notebook video that I played earlier, Amar Chitra Katha and comic books have been a major source of inspiration at Tolkien. Yes, yes, I did see that. Dr. Khanna, would you encourage teachers to blog? Yes, uh, I will actually, you know, uh, because uh, uh, in fact, I also blog uh, and, uh, you know, it gives them, uh, uh, because more and more people will join there and you have the better visibility and in this time of uh, uh, social media, uh, platforms, uh, you know, you are uh, recognized, you are, uh, you are uh, seen more often. So I will certainly go for it and motivate them. And I'll set myself as an example for that, first of all. So I do blog as well. Wonderful. What about you, Yashika Ma'am? Do you also have a online publishing presence? I uh, do not blog. And I think blogging and any of these social media sites are a very individual and a personal decision. And uh, to each his own, I would say that, in my opinion, I am not very active on Facebook. I don't exist on Instagram and Telegram. I find some of them very intrusive. And uh, when you're blogging, if you're creating a professional blog where you're writing about, uh, let's say, like I discussed with you, when teachers are sharing, because the teaching community must share. So if you've got a professional blog where you are sharing ideas, that's a different matter. But if you're choosing to just blog for the sake of blogging by writing something every day, then 
to be very honest, sometimes I find it a waste of words. Well, uh, there's a whole website called Twitter where, you know, millions are validating what you are just saying. Mm -hmm. Well, my last bit of uh, questioning, the school publishing system as it is today, right? There are certain big publishers. Some have acquired many others, grown into behemoths. And uh, the, the financial side of this for the teachers is not always very fair. What would you like to see changed in the current system of school publishing? Yashika, if I may ask you first. Actually, the system of school publishing needs to be a very alive system. And in all our schools, we do have a system of publishing in existing already. When you publish your annual magazine, when you publish your brochures, when you publish your little pamphlets, your, your school prospectus, if you're still having it, whether online or in a hard copy, when you've got your class magazines, when you've got your annual class uh, representations and publications with photos and excursions, et cetera, being recorded. So you do have your publishing uh, published items here in the school regular routine work of the year. At the same time, I think our school publishing system can be a very live one. When we have been teaching in this online platform, kind courtesy COVID, we have resorted to not using textbooks at all. And most of the publishing houses have come on board by providing us with PDF versions of their textbooks for us to use. Now, as I mentioned earlier, how we can make a live system of publishing of publications, that if you've got a topic, as I said, all over the world, it is the content stays the same. And this, of course, even if it is the history of a country, it's specific to a country. But if I'm learning about the uh, the papacy, for example, and whether I read it in Italy or whether I read it here, the history stays the same. So why don't we take a topic and leave it to the teachers to be able to present the topic by having those ELOs given to them and let them create their own worksheets, their own paragraphs, their own uh, sections which they wish to have the students know about. That entire data can be compiled and be created into your own in-house publication with reference to the curriculum. The NCRT does not specify which particular publisher you need to use. So you can be your own publishing house as well. Online books today have actually shown to us that the world is available to us as far as Google, Baba and universities and uh, Wikipedia as the university or the source is concerned. So we can curate our content from there, and we can publish from there. I do empathize also that there are schools in the country where this cannot happen, where you do need textbooks. And those textbooks will, of course, uh, exist. But we need to have a live system. We need to remove the redundant. I must share with you one of my first forays into academic publishing was with the kindergarten where if you see the nursery rhymes that we are learning from my grandmother's time, I'm a grandmother to a beautiful young girl who's four years old. And my grandmother, my mother, me, my daughter, and my granddaughter, five generations of us are learning the same nursery rhymes that exist without understanding the relevance of those nursery rhymes. We teach Baba black sheep and we picturize it as three beautiful sheep, black sheep with wool. But we don't realize that this was actually a poem that was made in revolt of the taxation times in 13th century UK. When we talk about uh, uh, Humpty Dumpty being a big egg, it was actually a gun that was used in the war. And these kind of things that we are teaching even now are passe. They need to be removed. They need to be changed. And this is where the modern school publishing system will come into play because the schools can use their own in-house resources to be able to develop books which is what we did when we first wrote the A to Z of nursery rhymes. So it is always a starting point and we must do it as soon as possible. Wonderful, ma'am. Uh, very interesting that you mentioned the bit about nursery rhymes because it was much later for quizzing, et cetera, that we learned about, you know, these backstories of nursery rhymes, so to say. My first epiphany of the lack of knowledge was when I first time realized that two twos are four is actually two twos are four and not Two to ZA two. four, yeah, it, it it was mind blowing that we learned tables for so long without realizing we are actually uttering an English sentence. 
In fact, I love no. the example that you've given, Subhayu, because now we are no longer teaching two twos are four. We're teaching two times two is four. Two times three is six. So it's changing. Yeah. Great, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Khanna, if I may come to you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, what changes I would like to see in the current uh, publishing school system, uh, I will uh, go for two things. First of all, uh, you know, uh, we have to create certain interest and for that we have to uh, have some uh, book clubs in every school. I'm sure most of the schools are having the reading clubs. Uh, in the uh, language classes, we should have the book reviews. Uh, these days, everything is digitalized, so it's become more and more easy. Uh, second thing, like uh, in my days, you know, we used to have certain budget in the school, like uh, Philip has already shared that we had about 11 magazines, I remember 13. So there was a competition between each and every department, you know, on the annual day, whose publication will be the best, you know, uh, for the Founders Day uh, occasion. So uh, now, however, these days we don't need those kind of budgets because everything is digitalized. So, however, the schools must have an upgraded uh, uh, computer labs or, uh, you know, the digital systems where uh, the students can work upon and we can give them a lot of opportunities to express their views, ideas, uh, come out with a lot of uh, creativity, innovation, and uh, come out with a lot of good work. And uh, these days, most of the schools are uh, posting their e-brochures, uh, e-newspapers, uh, uh, weeklies. I remember uh, at Dune School, we were having every Saturday uh, weekly on the table uh, since uh, I think uh, 1937, uh, if Philip, sir, I'm not wrong. And uh, so that was the culture in those days. But however, now the uh, times are changing or technology is there in our hands. We must make full use of that every single school and give a lot of opportunities to our young uh, authors to come up with their great ideas, uh, come out with the uh, innovative thoughts and express them uh, in very innovative manner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, Yashika, ma'am. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for this absolutely fantastic discussion. Uh, it's been a learning experience for me, listening to both of you. Uh, also, a huge thank you to Bharat, sir. Uh, sir, thank you so much Can for you sharing. Can say that again, please? <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Bhai, thank yeah. you very much for having us with you. And this, uh, this was a topic very close to my heart. And it's been a privilege to be with you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, you and thank you, Sandeep and Yashika. Nice to meet you. Same here, thank sir. you, Bharat, sir. Wish thank you all you. the best. Thank you. Thanks to everyone in the audience also for joining in. Uh, thank you for being part of the Together for Education series of webinars. Week after week, it has been fantastic to bring you these discussions. Do let us know that if there are certain topics that you would like us to explore, and we would be happy to set up a panel discussion for that as well. Well, thank you all for your time. That's been my time. Rishubhai Roy from Notebook signing off. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.